So uh, the first question is, what is Warpass positioning? So uh, Warpass positioning, as Johnny mentioned, is a complementary product of the var, uh, to the Warpass mesh. Uh, the reason why we provide this product is to help the customer to speed up their time to market in building an asset tracking product. And uh, our design uh, philosophy was to make it easy to deploy and also uh, have uh, low cost and power consumption. Uh, the infrastructure can be either battery or, or uh, uh, thermal power. Uh, there are two building blocks inside the uh, wireless positioning. So first is the node application, what we call positioning app. And this is a custom application designed for uh, running on a wireless mesh node. Uh, and it will collect the required measurement and they are going to send it over the mesh. And uh, the application is provided as a source code included in the, our SDK it's really free to use for our SLA customer and can be also customized uh, further while, uh, by, by the customer as many have done it already. Uh, the second uh, building block is the uh, backend service, uh, which is the wire filtration engine. And uh, this uh, service is responsible for transforming the measurements provided by the, the tags into positions. Uh, this uh, service is licensed separately from the, from the wire mesh. Uh, and it is a set of microservices delivered as a Docker container, uh, but it's also possible to have a native Linux installation uh, if, uh, if you want so. Uh, one very important uh, thing to, to note is that uh, you can run the wire password engine either on your own server on premise in completely private, or you can run it on the public cloud or, or, or your own private uh, cloud. And it is supposed that uh, you are going to host the Wirepass solution engine. Uh, Wirepass typically does not provide uh, production hosting. It will uh, just provide the demonstration type of hosting. So uh, the next question is how it is work. So there are a few main assumptions. Uh, first is that you deploy a Wirepass mesh network infrastructure uh, on a set on premise, and that infrastructure will contain routers, uh, what we in context of positioning call anchors, uh, which are installed in a uh, fixed location. So the routers, they are not moving around. But then obviously you have to run, uh, you, you have to provide this position of the routers or anchors to the WP as a configuration. Uh, the moving node will have to run the positioning application or your own application which would integrate the positioning functionality. This position application is going to take uh, periodically RSSI measurement uh, by scanning and detecting all the anchors around them, and it is going to send it over the mesh to the to the backend. WP is going to process the measurement, and by using the known anchor position, we'll calculate the moving uh, tag position. Uh, one thing to note, we just mentioned already in some other presentation, is that the infrastructure what you are using for asset tracking is actually general purpose infrastructure, mesh infrastructure, and you can reuse it for other purposes as well, like for example, collecting sense of data or other uh, implementing other use cases. So not only it's not dedicated only for positioning. So uh, now briefly about the positioning application. So first, let's go through the feature. For, uh, one feature is that obviously we can control the measurement rate, and uh, in, uh, important to note is that this can be controlled remotely uh, from uh, from the backend by changing the configuration, such that the tags can dynamically adapt depending on various condition, uh, their measurement rate. Uh, there are two main uh, uh, operating modes. So one, what we call always connected, when the tag is connected uh, uh, continuously to the mesh, and we'll try to reconnect in the case the connection drops due to the movement. And uh, we have a second uh, mode, which is non-router uh, long sleep, uh, which is uh, providing a more deterministic power consumption and slightly higher uh, density of the tags. Uh, and in this mode, the tag is actually sleeping between the updates, so therefore it's going to disconnect from the, the mesh and uh, uh, provide additional uh, power consumption savings. Then um, um, uh, we have the remote configuration, so in addition to the measurement rate, there are uh, other parameters that can be uh, controlled remotely from the backend. Uh, it is possible to uh, split the tags in different classes and therefore have uh, individual or personalized setting for each of these classes. Uh, it is possible to send BLE beacons. So currently we support Eddystone, UID, and iBeacon. And uh, this is again fully configurable in terms of interval power 
and when they are enabled. So it can be always enabled or can be enabled at any given time, or they can be enabled if the tag goes outside the mesh coverage, and therefore you can still detect the tag using a mobile phone and, and a simple application. So uh, uh, the next feature is the battery voltage reporting in the same measurement message the, next to the RSSI. So this is just uh, a matter of convenience, and you can monitor the, the battery of, of the tag, which is obviously important. Uh, we support both the battery-operated uh, infrastructure, so low, low energy, and also the low latency, so high performance, but which require some permanent power, or a mixed mo mode of these two. Manufactured provisioning, so it's possible to customize the tag parameter when, when it's manufactured. And uh, one important thing is the over the update, we have obviously the standard one, uh, which is available for the mesh nodes, but we also implement in the application support for the case when the uh, uh, node is using norm to not sleep. And uh, if you want to see more about the application and the code, you can really uh, see it in our uh, GitHub SDK. So uh, the wireless switching engine, uh, briefly, the features are obviously the position computation. Uh, one thing to note here is that we are using VGS84, so the standard lighting and longitude used by, by GPS. Uh, we are we have support for market floor, so you can we can detect uh, on what floor of the, of the building the tag is. Uh, we can uh, um, uh, provide uh, support for area, so we determine on what area. Uh, a tag is according if the area is configured to the system. So an area is a polygonal, uh, polygonal shape uh, type of area. Uh, measurement decoding. So WP includes a decoder which can uh, uh, by itself decode the raw measurement and uh, process them. And then we also support uh, different anchor types. So in some cases, there are differences in the hardware. And that can result in an uh, offset of the RSSI. And this can be compensated according to the anchor type and can be informed to the WP. Uh, the interfacing to the uh, WPE it can be done uh, through either MQTT or GRPC. GRPC is actually the internal bus of the uh, WP microservices. And this API provides uh, the possibility to configure the WP, so effectively providing the anchor position and areas uh, to inject the measurements. Uh, and finally, it's going to allow you to observe the, the position uh, computed. Uh, there is a dedicated uh, API for interfacing with the WNT, uh, and that's only internal uh, between the WP and WNT at, at this moment. And uh, one important note is that as many of our backend services and gateway, uh, WP is also using PhotoBuff to encode the messages. And we are providing a file which describes this, this format. So uh, uh, regarding the installation, uh, there is an installation script provided which will allow you to install, install the Docker-based WP services. OK, so this is a top view of a typical mesh network. So we have the, the routers there with uh, dark uh, green, the tags, obviously. And we have the gateway communicating with the backend services. So now let's go quickly through what are the typical deployment steps, uh, what, uh, what the customer will take. Uh, so first, you, know, so you have to install the wireless mesh network. And typically, you start with the gateways. Uh, the number of gateways are determined based on what is the expected data message uh, throughput or rate and uh, what is also accepted latency. There is another criteria which will also uh, be the redundancy. So typically, if you have two gateways versus one, uh, the mesh will automatically adapt in the case one gateway just dies or is simply stolen or unplugged from the network. Uh, the next uh, uh, step is to place the anchor. So now, when you are deciding where to place the anchors, there are two basic criteria. One is the connectivity. And as Willa said, uh, Maximizing the usage of the mesh, uh, we require that the anchors of the routers are placed such that uh, each of them can connect and route data to several other uh, fellow routers. And uh, therefore, this will allow the mesh to optimize the throughput and increase the robustness. Um, the other element here to take into account is that there should be enough anchors around the gateways because the, the, the anchors around the gateways will spread up the connectivity to the gateways and also will uh, uh, spread up the 
the load over the over the rest of the of the machine infrastructure and uh, from the density perspective there should be enough anchors such that the tags in whatever area of the building they can still connect to an anchor so there are a limited number of uh, members of a, to a router and uh, therefore this needs to be taken into consideration uh, when using the northern to low slip uh, the capacity is slightly increased because uh, because the node is disconnected from the network and therefore that connection slot is, is free uh, then finally there is the positioning criteria so uh, the best result is is obtained when the uh, anchors are distributed such that the tags are surrounded by by anchor so you have you have an anchor in left right front and and back and uh, this is typically achieved by placing the anchors on a regular grid and you should avoid having a placing the anchor like collinearly like uh, uh, for example <clears throat> on a on a long bus because that will provide quite poor positioning performance although the tax can still connect to the mission and finally, you have to record the anchor position and uh, use that to configure the WP. So typically, a simple georeference map and the drag and drop process will ensure enough precision for uh, reco uh, for uh, uh, recording this anchor position. And uh, the final step is to install the WP backend service and implement the interface. So as I said, we have a proto file. Uh, and by using that, that profile, you can generate a, a library which will allow you to encode and decode the messages in basically most of the currently used programming languages. So this is pretty much automatic process and also the upgrade, if there is an upgrade of the, of the interface, uh, it's also very fast to, to upgrade. So um, next, uh, let's go in more details about the WP integration. So as I mentioned, there are uh, uh, Two interfaces. So first is the MQTT. So uh, for a customer backend, it is possible to connect to an MQTT broker, and then uh, WP is also configured to connect to the same broker. Uh, the backend in this case is going to generate the configuration and uh, is going to publish that configuration over the MQTT, and WP is going to receive it. Uh, the WP can uh, decode the raw, raw measurement uh, directly uh, coming uh, uh, from the gateways into the broker. And finally, calculate the position and deliver it back to the to the backend. So this is very straightforward. And if the MQT is your your uh, uh, system bus, uh, it is very very straightforward to to make this type of integration. Uh, the next possibility is to use the gRPC. So gRPC is actually very much related to the protocol buffer. It was developed by Google, and it's a remote possible call. And uh, in this case, the backend will interface directly with the MQT broker for the purpose of getting the raw measurement. And then it will make the configuration and measurement injection over the gRPC, so like simple calls, and then uh, receive, receive the position as the result of measurement uh, injection. Uh, it is here possible to configure the WP that it will automatically take the measurement, the raw measurement from the MQT broker. So uh, decoding the measurement is, is an optional step. The next uh, option is to use the WNT as your integration point. And as Temu said, the uh, WNT backend is providing an API. Uh, and you can interface directly to that API in the same way as the WNT client does. And uh, in this type of scenario, uh, the WNT can be used to generate the configuration. So basically, importing uh, this uh, uh, anchor and then determine their position and it's going to decode the measurement message and inject the configuration to the, to the WP. The only thing what the, the, um, the backend uh, the client should then do is to consume the, the node, posi uh, node position. So the configuration generated by the WNT client is, is following a, a very simple step. So first you import the floor plan then you drag and drop the anchor on the floor plan and uh, eventually define areas if you, if you want to use them. So I'm going to show quickly some screenshots of the WNT uh, process uh, in, in next. So, And uh, uh, as I mentioned, the customer backend will receive the pressure from the WNT. And uh, that interface is done over a web socket. Um, uh, the data is encoded either in JSON or uh, protocol buffer. 
and uh, you can uh, through the, that API you can import receive the floor plan areas and take the node list and also the, the position and uh, if you want you can still uh, get the positions directly from the WPE either to the GRPC or from the entity broker so that's also still available so uh, next, uh, I'm just going to show quickly uh, some screenshots from the WNT client. So Temu introduced the, ne uh, the network management uh, to the WNT. So this is just highlighting the feature existing in WT for positioning. So uh, as I mentioned, the first thing to do is to import a floor plan. So you can define buildings and you can import a floor plan. Uh, this is by, done by simply uh, adding an image of the floor plan. Then the next step is to define, to georeference geo the floor plan by providing four points. So you provide the latitude and longitude of those four points and you can drag and drop the marker uh, on the floor plan such that you can accurately uh, uh, position them. And finally, uh, you have to provide the scaling factor and that can simply be taken as, for example, the size of a door or the distance between two very clearly visible pillars on the on the floor plan. Uh, as a side note, uh, the conversion between the BGS84 and to the pixel, so to the uh, floor plan um, uh, uh, system, uh, is described in the one of our provided document, and there is also a code example available in GitHub. GitHub, so it's very straightforward to make make the, the conversion back and forth. Uh, next, uh, once, once you have the floor plan, uh, what you will have to do is to basically just drag and drop the anchors to the place where they were installed. And for this, there is a node management uh, view under settings. Uh, what you are going to see there is that you are going to see a list of anchors. And uh, these anchors are not yet commissioned. And therefore, by using the anchor ID, you will have to just drag them to the place where, where they were installed. So. Uh, and once, finally, uh, one thing what you can do is that you can add additional metadata, like for example, just adding a friend name to that anchor or whatever other the description. And also you can provide at this step the event, if, uh, the RSSI offset, if there is a, such an offset. So in the case you have a mixed uh, hardware uh, installation, then that might become handy if you have really a big difference in the, in the radius there. So uh, then uh, you can also visualize the, the position. So we have this map view in WNT. And uh, one thing to highlight is that uh, you can select the building, the floor plan, and you, there are two different uh, views there. One is dedicated for positioning. And as you can see, in this case, uh, the links between the uh, routers and tags are not present. So it's kind of easier to visualize the, the tags and the position. Then uh, there is a quick filter uh, allowing you to uh, select what you want to see. And uh, there is a list of areas, and the areas are also shown on the, on the display. And uh, that's basically it. So the next view is the node info. So in here, you have the uh, uh, detailed uh, information about the position, about the computer position. So we have the light and longitude, what is what building floor. Uh, and area ID that uh, particular tag is. And in the lower left uh, corner, you can see the WP uh, version running. And in the case it's stopped for, for any reason, then uh, that uh, line is going to be uh, red. And uh, there is also, under settings, there is a dedicated view uh, of the WP service running uh, status. So. So finally, uh, the expected uh, performance. So first, uh, let's uh, let's go through the position accuracy. So what we have observed so far, based on our test, and also our customer test, is that in most of the cases you can achieve a position accuracy below five meters. But now, uh, as was also uh, presented by our customer in in the previous tracks. Uh, RSSI, although is very uh, cheap and uh, easily available for our uh, uh, chipset, uh, we, we are currently supported, supporting. Uh, it is also affected by a number of environmental factors like signal fading, multipath, antenna radiation patterns. So we have very small devices with constrained antenna. 
the building layout, the wall materials, uh, how, how reflective the, the, uh, the surfaces are, or metallic surfaces in general are, are reflecting quite a lot. And obviously also external interference sources. But uh, uh, the good news here is that uh, through a, a simple anchor placement uh, control, uh, you can reduce the negative impact. And the fact that the anchors are battery power makes this uh, uh, adjustment uh, quite easy and uh, low cost as well. And uh, in some use cases, room accuracy is highly desired, like for example, in, in hospital use cases, when you want to locate the equipment in a certain storage room. And that can be easily achieved by simply placing an anchor in that, in that room. And uh, in, we have seen quite good, good results with, with that, that simple technique. So uh, the second performance is the power consumption. So first, uh, the tuck power consumption is dominated by the scan operation and is uh, about linearly dependent on the update rate. So as you as the tag up, update uh, faster, then it will obviously consume more power. And for this, additional techniques like motion detection triggering uh, of the update or dynamic update uh, uh, control for the for the update rate uh, can help uh, re reduce the, the power consumption. So for example, you can have off work or out of work time when uh, you can simply reduce the update rate of the of the tags because you know that you don't actually need uh, any any information or fast information from the tag at that point in time. And then during some hours you need a faster update, you can automatically update it. And the, this uh, update uh, of the uh, of the rate is uh, is very fast. And to give an example, so the current consumption uh, when the update rate is like 60 seconds is about 153 microamp and that goes to 31 microamp if you have like 300 seconds uh, update rate. And this was measured using NRLS mode and uh, NRF 52 uh, A32. And obviously, for a battery uh, powered uh, device, the DC DC converter inside the chip should be enabled. For the anchors, the power consumption is dependent uh, on the number of connecting nodes and the routed data path, uh, uh, routed data rate. And this is very very uh, intuitive. Uh, to uh, to be so, and uh, the anchors which are close to the gateways, they are going to consume slightly higher power because obviously they are going to route more data than an anchor which is right at the edge of the of the building. And in order to have a more uh, distributed uh, uh, power consumption, it is important that replacement around the gateways is, is done such that uh, there are several of them uh, connected to the, to the gateway. And that will reduce their data routing uh, time and uh, uh, the data routing rate and uh, is going to increase their lifetime. And uh, an end course is adjusting the access cycle as I mentioned by Ville automatically and uh, according to the traffic conditions. So basically the saving is going to automatically be, be there according to the to those conditions. And the, car, the current consumption for an anchor is having a larger span. So in typical goes from 27 microamp to up to 130, depending on what is the, the load. Typically, it will be around 100 microamp in, in most of the practical cases. 